Okay, so we're going to watch uh, Solyov rant and rave and talk about how we're in World War IV now, and he's going to start by talking about cluster munitions and how they're outlawed and that sort of thing. Just let's hear what he has to say, and I'll stop periodically to add some commentary. This, by the way, is done by the Russian Media Monitor, who does absolutely great work identifying and then translating these clips. My hat's off to the Russian Media Monitor. Okay, here we go. Here's Solyov. Cluster munitions are not Wunderwaffe. That's a wonder weapon. It's a German word from World War II. They won't radically change the course of military actions. First and foremost, it's a threat to civilians. Okay, that's true. So if that's the case and you're hot and bothered about it, how come Russia used it in Ukraine if you're worried about civilians? It's a good question to ask. As Governor Gladkov said, cluster munitions were used in strikes in the Belgorod region. In reality, we have already seen the Ukrainians using cluster munitions even before this, and now they are receiving them from America. Low-life John Kirby, who is supposedly an admiral, you are personally at fault. Okay. You can call him a low life. You can have that description. People may use that description against you as well. But he is an admiral. He's not a supposed admiral. People would be like, professor, if you really are a professor. Okay, ask my students. They're real, I'm really a professor. Um, this title is not going to be changed by your insult. Okay, you're personally at fault that the American cluster munitions outlawed in many countries, about which you Americans were yelling that their use constitutes a war crime. Okay, let's stop there. It's outlawed in many countries, but it's not outlawed in Ukraine. They never signed onto the treaty. The United States never signed onto the treaty, so for us to provide it to Ukraine is not a problem. Russia never signed onto that treaty, So, and you've used it in Ukraine. So I, I don't understand what, what the issue is here, unless you're just trying to muddy the water. And then that you were saying was a war crime. No, what the sec press secretary for Biden said, and I'm no fan of this press secretary, but I'm gonna, I defended her in a previous video because she said the potential use of this or the use of this could potentially be a war crime. And the context was if it's used against or in a civilian context, right? Not to attack um, other soldiers, but where civilians are around. That was the context of her comment. So it's not that she's being hypocritical by saying this one time and not saying it another. It's that you're taking her out of context. And I, I'm just not going to permit you to do that without some pushback. Okay, that their use consists of a, of a war crime and are now exploding in the Belgorod region and are killing our journalists, among others. Okay, so first, we don't know that these are American munitions that are actually doing this. Uh, the Ukrainians have been uh, using this for some time. They've had their own munitions. They've gotten some from Turkey. And just because one thing, the American munitions just arrived and like a day later, it was going off in Belgorod. But that seems like it would take a while for the munitions to actually get wherever it's going. It could be, but it's not necessarily so. But not in some Hague. Rather, we will hold a tribunal someplace in Kiev. I think that's a great idea. I think that's exactly what should happen, that a tribunal should be held in Kiev, and that's where Putin should be tried. Like the one that was held in Nuremberg long ago. We will try the Kiev Nazi junta, along with you collaborators, who are afraid to step out and fight us directly. That's why you're sending your weapons and your pitiful mutts to fight against us. This bluster I find very interesting that uh, he's going to talk. It's like, it's kind of like the person that knows that they can't get into a fight. So they're like, yeah, what are you going to do? Um, but they would never say that if they were actually by themselves. It, it's that kind of thing. Okay, this guy says, in my opinion, the situation keeps getting more and more complicated. Most importantly, we unfortunately see that our Western adversaries don't want to calm down. They keep going and they will go all the way. They will go until the end, understand? Now, if you're at all paying attention, it's not Western adversaries 
who saber rattle about World War III and nuclear weapons and things along these lines. It's almost exclusively the domain of Russians and their repeaters. What I mean by their repeaters are the Russian state media does this, and then it's picked up by pro-Russian repeaters in the United States and Western Europe that are repeating that propaganda. But rarely do you see YouTubers who are pro-Ukraine making this kind of argument. Very, very rarely. In fact, we're saying, no, you know, we're trying not to do that. They will go all the way to the end. In this sense, it's important to understand the danger of everything that we're facing. Ukraine is a big nation. It's a people. It's time for us to recognize that it's a nation. While it's a brotherly nation, it has its own interests. We have to offer them something. We have to tell them something. Our president clearly said that Ukraine statehood will remain. The president said that if you make a move, your, your very statehood will be in question. So this guy is a minority voice, and what they do is they allow some minor minority voices to have a slightly different position than their own, and then if it goes too far, it's enough that they can slap it down uh, pretty easily. Um, so even talking about Ukraine as its own nation is something that they are not going to be very happy about, because Putin doesn't seem to allow that at all. Um, and so even some of their some of their people have voted to join Russia. Yeah, they joined Russia in a rigged election where they didn't really have a fair vote and were kind of intimidated. Okay, let's keep going. Your very statehood will be in question. We aren't saying we'll let them keep their statehood. What awaits them? Do we want to include Ukraine as part of Russia? In my opinion, that would be a mistake. We shouldn't repeat this mistake of the Soviet Union. Even considering that some regions voted to join Russia, if they vote to join us, we would we oppose the will of the people? If their regions want to join us, let them. But it's their business, and we should let them do so. Well, what if the people don't want to join you at all? Like what Ukraine has shown that they clearly don't want to join you. Would you oppose that? Of course you would. We need an organization that will deal with this. If a part of Poland wanted to join Russia, I also agree. We need radio stations broadcasting in Ukrainian. In Soviet years, during the Great Patriotic War, technology was different, but they managed to do it. Why aren't we doing it? The radio stations in Ukrainian. Solyov Live has a great program. <laughs> I enjoy watching them. I don't. And the subtitles in Ukrainian, send them over there towards Ukraine. Modern technologies make it possible. Here's what I want to say. Many of our problems are based on the concept that we're on the verge of World War III. From my point of view, World War III already ended. We are now waging World War IV. We lost World War III. The availability of new weapons has transferred global wars between nations into a new format, the format of a Cold War. Any global war is a war for the new world order. Right now, we're also fighting for a new world order, but using the same means that we used during the Cold War. Our society keeps on living. They say, we're waiting for World War III. We're already in World War IV. They're fighting against us using other means. They're bringing in more forces. The U.S. will not stop. Okay, so let's stop there with the U.S. will not stop. As if Russia is going to stop, right? Russia's not planning on stopping at all. They just passed yesterday, I think it was. Uh, Putin signed a law extending the age for both active duty and reservists within the Russian military. A week earlier, they uh, changed the high school curriculum down as far as 10th grade to teach basic military skills to 10th, 11th, and 12th graders because Putin is geared towards a longer war. Russia's not planning on stopping. Now, this is really an interesting thought. This We've lost World War III, the Cold War, and now we're in World War IV. Um, and he's kind of right that World War III, you could consider the Cold World War, World War III, and it's, it's over. But we're into a new phase, and they might be on the cusp of World War IV if we're not very careful. They're bringing in more forces. The U.S. will not stop. Even while they have internal fights, here's what's happening right now in the U.S. There are two main contenders. 
the president for the presidency of the United States next year. On one side, we have and Soliov interrupts Trump, a corrupt bribe taker, pardon an unregistered lobbyist. On the other side, we have a mutineer and a criminal. I think they're talking about Biden there. Soliov, oh, he brought in Stormy Daniels to deal with her. He kept secret documents in the wrong places. Both of them do. He provoked an insurrection on January 6th and is now inter interfering with an investigation. Ay ay ay. Anyway, the situation that is unfolding, on one hand, it is funny. It, the worthlessness of the American establishment. In a country with an arsenal of nuclear weapons, the worthlessness of the American establishment is evident as it relates to what we say about our country, but the mechanisms they launch keep functioning. It functioned 20 years ago, and it is functioning now. Right now, they have a goal, and the main point, if we break Russia, we can break China. Well, okay, let's talk about a couple things here. So, as an American, I find it really odd and offensive of what they're talking about, about the worthlessness of the American establishment. I see it differently. I think we're functioning pretty well, comparatively. Culturally, we're at odds with each other, but... That there's ebbs and flows in that cycle of that. I would like us to get along a little bit better, but okay, it is what it is. As far as the functioning of the government, it functions a lot better than what's going on in Russia. But he got to the, a main point here, and he said, if we can break Russia, we can break China. And he's actually on to something. So when I ask you to watch Russian state media, it's because we can sometimes glean useful insights, not just about what they're projecting, but sometimes real truth comes through. It says we, if we break Russia, we can break China. It's not so much to break China, but to prevent China from trying to do this with Taiwan as well. See, there are broader geopolitical actions here. If we don't stop Putin in Ukraine, Putin can spill into Moldova and Georgia and the rest of Europe if they, if they get enough momentum. And we don't want that. But we also have to keep our eye on what China potentially might want to do as well. We're trying to prevent World War III, or in his case, as he explains, World War IV. But it's a useful insight to think in the terms that he's thinking in. Okay, so tell me what you think, because this was a really insightful discussion. I mean, once they got past, past the blustering and the misrepresentation and the calling us hypocrites when they're doing that same thing, um, Solyov is always terrible, but this last guy was really interesting. And the guy before that actually had some interesting points about the nationhood and maybe we need to do something differently. If Russia really wanted to keep Ukraine in its orbit, instead of threatening it, it could have wooed it and created free trade agreements and worked together on collaborative projects. But the Russian demeanor has always been, we're Russians, we're better than you, and you are subservient. So you should be bowing before us. And even the way that they think about Ukrainians is as little Russians on the borderlands of Russia. We're awesome. You're not. And that's the way it is. Okay. Thank you for your time. Thank you for the likes, the shares, the subscribes. And thank you most of all for being the kind of person that cares about Ukraine.